I graduated high school in 87. And I really thought that we had arrived. Like the 80s were as good as it was ever going to get for anything. Those were happy times, I guess. Living through the 80s twice now, I've had enough. <laughs> you know, but it was it was a great time. <laughs> every cast member, every crew member, we always looked out for Sean. He was such a sweet, special little dude that yeah. we we could not fathom the thought of him being corrupted in any way. So we <laughs> would, you know, we would really try to be careful with him because not we were working long hours. And Sean obviously could only work a set number of hours, but in that day, in part of his duties were going to school between takes. He never got upset. He never threw a tantrum. He never seemed tired. He was always polite. He was always please and thank you. And it was like, oh, don't ever change. Don't okay. ever change. But we we had the best time getting to know his whole family because yeah. they travel as a unit. So we got to know his mom and dad, his brother, his Nona. You know, she moved out as well. So um, it's been a pleasure watching him. And when his voice started to change, there would be these snarky comments mm -hmm. on social media and I would get so pissed off. And yeah. I would throw it right back at those people sometimes, which, you know. Is that really what anyone needs me to do? But I felt like I needed to. I don't know. I just felt like, I know I'm not this kid's mother, really, but I I do feel protective of him. I want to ask you about George Siegel's death. It came out of nowhere, us, because, you know, we'd been shooting during COVID and he had had so many close calls, but he kept getting through it. You know, like there was a fire up by his house. He was living in Santa Rosa. And so we would either have someone drive him down or fly him down every couple of weeks so we could just shoot everything with him. Mm -hmm. And um, so there was a fire and he got through that. And then there was COVID and he got through that. And then I think there was another malady and he got through that. His wife got really sick. He got through that. He went and had surgery. He got through that. Yeah. And then it was, oh, George is gone. And it, I felt like the floor come out from under us. Yeah. And we were shooting on the beach the day we found out. We were shooting at the Goldberg's Beach House. And so it was a weird day where we were all together at the beach mm -hmm. and that's where we were when we found out and it was devastating and there were immediate tears and immediate like what are we even doing what are we doing this is because sean and i like maybe two weeks prior had had a night where we where we had george all to ourselves and he was very talkative that night, telling us stories. And I look back and how lucky were we that we had him to ourselves that night. And that was the last time we saw him. And that was really hard to get through. But I know that he would have been like, keep going, keep going. Yeah. George knew what was up. Yeah. He didn't want he wouldn't have wanted us to quit. And he loved doing the show. Yeah. And I know that because every time we would do a season finale, he would rush off trying not to say goodbye to anybody, like trying to pull an Irish goodbye because he was crying. And watching him and Sean together throughout the years was just absolutely life affirming. Yeah. They were buds and he would give him such good advice and he would, he just loved watching him as we all did. You know, Sean is quite the character, but, but George really like, he knew we had a good thing too. And he was, um, 
Oh, we've just loved him. Now the wig is sitting in my dressing room here at home. I've got a few wigs from different things, you know? Yeah. So I have my, my wig line up and she's there and she will sit there. She's very delicate at this point. <laughs> I'm afraid to take her off her wig head. Um, but she's, she's sitting there. I just kind of made it okay in my mind. Like, look, every day you're going to open that closet and it's going to be something that you don't want to put on because it's either itchy <laughs> or ridiculous. And you just do it. It's what the character would wear. And that is how all the moms that I knew in the eighties dressed. So there was only one time when I said, please, why do you hate me? <laughs> Which is a wardrobe look like? department. It was like this Miss Piggy pink overalls. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's what the character wear. I do want to ask you about St. Dennis Medical. What can you tell me? Well, fingers crossed that it gets picked up. Yes. Um, but uh, so I, I play the hospital administrator of this hospital that is um, kind of a safety hospital where they have to take everybody, you know, mm -hmm. whether you're indigent or have no insurance, like we're the ones that catch everybody. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they're always trying to raise money. And that falls on my character, Joyce. Mm -hmm. So um, it stars David Allen Greer, Allison Tolman, Josh Lawson, Kayun Kim, um, it's a great cast and it's, yeah. a, I mean, I'm sorry, but hospitals are funny. They don't mean to be, <laughs> and they may not be funny if it's happening to you, but a lot of funny things happen in hospitals. Yeah. So this would be kind of like the office, but in a hospital setting. And, uh, you know, this, this woman, my character thinks of this as like, look, we're a safety hospital now, but you give me five years, I will make this a destination hospital. <laughs> the best mammogram machine you've ever seen. People are going to come in from all over the West Coast to, you know, have their mammograms here. Um, I, I'm going to expand this wing and blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, they're still using Windows 95. Like they need <laughs> some major updates to other things. So yeah. it was fun shooting it. 